Vinegarbe here and welcome to this Minecraft 1.14 Wool Farm Designs video. Uh, industrial Wool Farms. So this uh, is Wool Farms that actually produce between two and three and a half thousand wool per hour. So a lot of wool. And so we're gonna look at three different designs here uh, of varying degrees of production here. And we're going to look at the efficiency and stuff like that. But this is a tutorial as well. I will show you exactly how to build this block for block. If you're wondering, the sheep are hidden over here. There's 24 sheep in this little holding cell. And of course in the second version I've upped it to uh, two holding cells. And in the third version I've upped it to four holding cells. And I wanted to see sort of where we hit the sweet spot and uh, what we can do. So let's look at some numbers. If we have uh, one cell and the grass is moving around, by the way, on a, on a piston tape, uh, on all three designs. If we have one cell, so 24 sheep, uh, we get 1134 wool per hour. Uh, this is extremely similar to Cup Fan's design. Uh, however, he had missed a trick with the grass placement here, so we have better rates than his farm, uh, just by placing some blocks really here. And that yields 47.25 wool per sheep per hour. So that's really good. If you watch El Mango's uh, video about wool farms, recent video, you can see that I think the maximum amount of wool a sheep can produce per hour, assuming that it always, always has grass under its feet, is something like 48 or 49. So we are super near that number here with this farm. And I'll say as well I've tested this for around about an hour so probably uh, this will go down maybe a little bit if we leave it running for longer because that is very close to the maximum whoops all right the second design here we have two cells so we have 48 sheep we get 2302 wool per hour and uh, that is even closer to the maximum of 47.96 wool per sheep per hour so this is super efficient uh, the third and final design, we have four cells, so we have 96 sheep. Uh, that yields 3,500 wool per hour or so, 3,428 to be exact. Uh, but that lowers the efficiency to 35.71 wool per sheep per hour. So the most efficient farm would be to have two cells uh, or one cell. They're very equal, to be honest. Uh, but the, the highest yield per hour would be the two cells if you also want it to, it to be efficient. But before we go any further guys, as always remember to leave me a like on the video and let me know in the comments if you have any questions, comments or otherwise. And please guys, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. There's plenty more where this video comes from and uh, you won't regret it I hope. I have let's plays, I have uh, tutorials, I have build videos and time lapses, I have all sorts of Minecraft related things. Right, so let's uh, let's explain how these farms work then. Um, the sheep are standing here. They're standing on a grass block, of course. When they eat the grass block, the grass block changes to dirt, but uh, it also gets shuff shuffled to the side. So there's a piston tape moving the grass block so that they should have fresh grass almost always here. Uh, the second thing is they have a glass block inside of their heads. Let's see if we can show that here. Uh, they have a glass block inside of their heads, like that. Uh, and what that does is when the sh sheep are sheared, the wool goes upwards. So we can collect it up top here and just send it in a little water stream to our collection point here in the middle. And I just prefer this a lot to uh, rails or other things and hopper minecarts. It's less laggy. And uh, you don't have to have the, the collection underneath or anything like that. It's just pure uh, uh, bliss to see them pop up like this and, and into a single hopper, which is the whole collection system here. The sheep are sheared because when they eat, this uh, observer triggers this piece of redstone, which triggers this dispenser, which has shears in it. And uh, we can also fill in more shears here from a chest. One for each module we have. So, how does the piston tape work? Well, apart from setting off the shears, or the dispenser with the shears, these observers, this and that observer over there, also sends a signal here 
that goes into this block here and if we look on the other side of this block there is a piece of redstone here and there's a bit of a contraption going on here now I'll go through this step by step and I will uh, explain everything so the signal comes out here goes into this comparator which sends it over to the piston which pushes these blocks away at the same time, the signal goes in here to this uh, little contraption here, which delays, well, which keeps the signal on this repeater for a while, which locks this comparator. And so what that means is that if uh, two of these fires really close to each other, um, it'll only trigger the piston once, and that's important. We'll see that when we build it later, but that's basically a prevention this is basically a prevention from this triggering too often and mucking up the piston tape yep now the second thing here is just a hopper clock as you can see with a observer and a repeater going into the same signal here same redstone line as the other signal which is behind that block there and um, the reason for this is that sometimes sometimes the sheep end up standing like now they were standing on a dirt block and that can go on for a fair few seconds sometimes and uh, it, it basically goes on until this grass block here then regrows again um, and to prevent that we send a signal periodically here to move the piston tape anyway even if nobody has eaten anything or there's no grass anywhere we will just move it on uh, one step to to get a continuous rotation here so the final little redstone thing to talk about here is that underneath each of the other three pistons uh, in the piston tape we just have a smart piston which is a torch and a piece of redstone and a block and what that does is is uh, that as soon as there's a block here it pushes the piston over one step and there's one there and one hidden here behind the hopper clock and that is the whole farm explained now let's uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about grass regrowth guys so in minecraft grass can regrow in a area that is five by three by three so it's uh, goes out like this as well actually but if you make a cut through of that we uh, can learn that the the source block of the grass so the the block that gives the grass to this block so to speak has to be in the second most layer of the uh, five by fi five by three by three or three by three by five area and uh, so for that reason grass can go then one step up because this is this is the second layer here in our little and and this here is our three by three for this block Right, so the grass can grow one step up and up to three steps down or blocks down. So if we have grass in this position, going like over like this, and then dirt here, we will maximize the chance of grass growing on this particular block. And so in these farms, that is what we're actually absolutely trying to do. If we just make a little insertion here, you can see that we are following the pattern here. We got two blocks, one block, two blocks. This is the source block. This is what we're trying to grow grass onto. You can see there's a, there's a dirt block coming along here, for instance. And then we have two blocks underneath here as well. And now we can't do it all the time here. That's, that's not the right kind of block. We can't do it all the time here because we have to have things uh, like the water stream going through here we have to have the sheep in and and the, the the dispenser and so on and so forth so some grass blocks will go missing around the cells but apart from that we are following this this grass rule which is really good because that already ups the rates uh, significantly as as you can see over on this farm here with over 100 wool per hour compared to cub fans design Alright, so to start building this farm, you place a piston facing sideways like that. One block in front and two blocks underneath, you place a block. Uh, on that block you place a torch. Next to that block you place a grass block with a piece of redstone on top. And next to the uh, grass block and next to the piston you place another grass block. And this is one of the smart pistons. If you place a block here, it'll push it away, and you do that until it doesn't push anymore. 
So that is the length of the farm. Now on the last grass block you need to place another piston and then you need to repeat the pattern. So one block below the grass block here we place a block with a torch on it. We place a block, a piece of redstone and a block like that. And then you extend it this way and you repeat this on all four, all four sides and we'll, we'll go back later and modify one of the sides to be our sort of starting point for the piston tape. Alright, at the moment your farm should look like this. Now you need to go around and take out every grass block that is uh, in front of a piston for now. And uh, that's what we're gonna do with the grass, with the piston tape for now. Now we need to select a place for our cell placement. And uh, we can select any place we want to really. Uh, I'm gonna build one cell here and the other cells are just the same if you wanna have more than one. So we're going to place it here in the middle of this uh, of this stretch here. So we place two glass blocks like that and this is where the sheep are going to stand. So now we can go around to the back of the or back or the inside of the farm, place a observer on that grass block where the sheep are going to sheep are going to stand, place a block behind that and a piece of redstone on top. And then go around to the front again and place a dispenser like that. And now if we update this block here, for instance, if we remove it, you'll hear the ticking. And if we place some block in here, it'll shoot out. All right, it's time to do some grass placement here. So remember how we want to have a line of grass below the farm. So place that on every conceivable block you can. All right, so we have that all around now. We want to do a row on the inside as well though. So let's go to the inside and place a row here. All right, so we placed that row in its entirety. And we need to actually place a row above as well. So we have a row here and a row here. And it goes all the way around the farm as well, but leave these blocks alone uh, because they need to be there for the smart pistons. All right, that's the outer row. Let's do the inner row as well. It's the same principle. And in the end, it should look like this. Now we need to take some torches. The source block of the grass that it is growing, that that is growing from, needs to have a light level of nine or above. Uh, so we need to have torches uh, quite frequently here. We'll place one on each of these blocks that are lower down. Uh, we're gonna have the farm here, so we'll place the block uh, or torch two blocks away from the middle of the farm, like that. That should be sufficient. Boink. One, two, three, boink. Of course, if you place too many torches, that is not a problem. It is a problem if you place too few, though. Going on the inside here, we can place torches in the corners, and then the same, uh, well, two. Blocks distance here should be fine. One, two, block, or one, two, torch, one, two, torch, one, two, torch, one, two, torch, and that's that. Now we need to also make sure that the piston tape itself is lit up, but we can't place torches here, of course, because these blocks are going to move. So for the piston tape, we're going to have to place blocks or torches on the side of, um, of the whole thing here. So Place them maybe two blocks in like that and then one in the middle and that's that. Now finally mirror these placements here up top. Just make sure that everything is lit up properly basically. Alright next step is to continue with the cage a little bit here. We can place a grass block here. We can place two grass blocks here. A piece of glass in the back here or in the front if you will. And then we can place a grass block on top of the dispenser as well here. And this is actually the cage created. In editing, I realized that I've forgotten a really important thing with this uh, cell building. So let's add it now. You need a, a vine and you need to place it on the inside here. And you need to do that before you place the sheep. So I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to cheat now. <laughs> there we go. There's a vine in there. And the reason for the vine is that if they stand in a vine, they won't have to check for collisions. And as you can see, if you look on the at sign, 
uh, it says uh, on the third line on, on the left hand side here it says says integrated server at uh, 18 or 19 or 24 millisecond ticks um, that basically gets lowered quite a lot when you put the vine in okay the next step is to place more grass so we want to fill in this strip here just coming out from from the side of the cage and all the way around and this is why we place torches on the sides here because now we're covering over the piston tape uh, with more grass and that's just to increase the spread chance to the grass below final grass layer is up top here on top of these grass blocks all around the outside of the farm and the same on the inside here yeah Okay, take your glass blocks and place one on each side here and uh, this is where we're gonna have the canal going out to our where we have our collection system. We need to torch this up as well of course so just place torches until you're happy that everything has a light level of 9 or above. Alright, it's time to get the sheep in here. Now obviously if you're in survival you can do it in many many ways. It's basically the same as my cow farm or my pig farm or something like that. You take them on a lead, you lead them up here, and then you push them gently and nudge them until they fall in the hole. You can also make a water stream from somewhere where they get sucked up and moved over and then drop down into here or something like that. Now, I would recommend in survival to dye the sheep to your desire first. Of course, you can have one of each color in here, for instance, and then some with two, two sheep of, of that color. Or you can have everything in the same color or any combination thereof. Now I will show you a trick here though uh, by which you can actually recolor the sheep in this farm. Uh, so that's three, four, five, six. You need 24 in here and this should be the last sheep we need. In fact that's one sheep too many. Okay so there we go. That's 24 sheep in there now. If you want to recolor the sheep you need a bucket of water, a Button, a stun button, well it can be any button actually. And then of course you need some dye. Let's make purple sheep in this uh, in this farm in this case. So what you need to do then is you need to remove that piece of redstone, place the water bucket in, place the button on the dispenser, press the button, and these guys will start jumping up and down a little bit. If you press F3 and B you can see their hitbox here. And then you just hold on to your dye and you should see them color into purple all of them in the end. Now it will take a while and you might need to jump around a little bit, maybe fiddle around and uh, do it from different angles, but when you see no he white heads or heads other than the purple ones, you are done. Alright, I think that's done now. So then when you're done you just press the button again, grab your bucket of water, remove the button and put the redstone back. And now is a good time to Put in shears in here just fill it up with shears now if you want to and this is optional you can remove that grass block there place a hopper into the dispenser place another hopper uh, into that hopper and place a double chest <laughs> a double chest on top here and just fill that up with as many dispensers as it can hold okay so the sheep are in place the shears are in place it's, go it's going to start working now, the farm, as you can see. But we need to get the items up top here, and we need to keep the sheep in place properly. And to do that, you place a grass <laughs> glass block, even not a grass block. You take a piston and a redstone block. You place the piston like that, and you place the redstone block like that. And there, now the glass is inside of the sheep's head, but the sheep are fine. And once they actually eat again. You'll see the loot pop up here for us to take. Alright, so we need to now sort out the rest of the piston tape so that it starts moving properly. And uh, what we do to do that is we place a block underneath uh, and in front of this piece of redstone. And then we, in this case we can just go out like this for instance. And then we place a block above as well like that, so that it looks like that. And then we take redstone dust and place it on a line here and finish off with a repeater on two ticks. So press it once. Alright, and as you can see, now that the sheep are being sheared, this also fires into that block over there. 
And so we need to find the, the that block on the other side here, and say that this is where our farm is gonna gonna start. You can of course check by removing the block and then replacing it again. But anyway, on that block on the opposite side, place a piece of redstone like that. Okay, now we need a little platform here. You can make it the three by three or something like that. That's fine. And uh, then we need to pull the signal out three blocks like that. Take a comparator and place it like that. Turn around and place the other comparator the other way around. And uh, place some redstone dust there. And as you can see now this redstone signal gets elongated a little bit here. And that's what is going to keep this from firing too often in the end. My buddy Ike says that this what we're building here is called a pulse limiter. So keep that in mind guys, keep that in mind. Okay, so we place a repeater there on the standard amount of ticks. Next to it, facing away from, from our redstone here, we place a comparator like that. And then we place a piece of redstone there. And you saw something happen there. Uh, that is because this should now be functioning. Except we probably need to place a block of grass somewhere. We'll, we'll give that some thought in a minute here. Anyway, we need to not have this redstone torch here. If we place a block of grass here now, um, this piston tape should now be working properly. There we go. Okay, so uh, what next step here is to place a row of blocks out here. Uh, we're gonna build us a little clock here just to keep the tape going in case it stops uh, for some reason. So the, f the f start of this is to take a repeater on two ticks and place it like that. And then take a observer <laughs> and place it the other way around so that it has its little dot facing into the repeater. And so we build a clock here. We need a piece of redstone here, sticky piston, block of redstone. And we need another sticky piston, and we need a, block, a piece of redstone, and then we need a block, and a block. And then in the middle here we need two hoppers, one facing into the other. Standard ether hopper clock, guys, everybody knows how to build one. If not, look it up. So that's that clock there. Now we need to place a number of items in it. You can experiment yourself with how many. I would say around 20 is a good uh, good amount, or 30. So let's behold this clock for a little bit here. As you can see, this pulse limiter makes it so that whenever this redstone signal is activated, this comparator can't actually send on the signal uh, for a little while. And that is what prevents this piston tape from hanging up. Because otherwise this piston might be caught on the out, while this piston over here is trying to push a block into its uh, space here. Alright, that's all the redstone for this farm. I hope you found that acceptable. Uh, let's just make a little collection system here as well. And we are done. So you place some glass blocks like this. And you need to find the middle of the farm. And I think this is the middle, so we place a double chest underneath here, one block underneath. Place a, a uh, hopper into that, and then we place some blocks around here, like that. You place a, a slab on the top half here, so that it's flush with the glass. And then you can just place some glass blocks over this here. And before you place the last one, take a bu bu bucket of water, I have that already and place it there. And that's the collection system done and as you can see it's starting to float in here and we're getting our loots down here. Now if you want to repeat this cell you can do it, uh, I would start on the opposite side here with the second cell like in this middle farm here. This is the most efficient farm I would say. Uh, but if you want to have say more um, sheep of each color you can do the four cell design as well but it's exactly the same cell, okay? That's that's the important thing here. Uh, so you just repeat that. And because the collection system is dead center here, all you do is you build out from this um, exactly the same way as, as we have built this cell. Um, let's have a look though at the redstone for uh, to connect to the piston tape, because that does change a little bit if you have two or more cells. 
So in the original here, over here, we just have this going out like this. Uh, but here, we have to capture the signal from both this observer and this observer. So we basically draw a line between those points with redstone, and then in the middle here I just went out to the side in the same manner. In the four uh, cell one, we, we, it becomes even more complicated because we can't go out in the middle. We have to capture from all four of the observers, so we make the redstone cross, and then we just take a side here and go out like that. That is it for this uh, Minecraft 1.14 industrial wool farm tutorial. I hope you liked the video. If you did, check out my channel and leave me a like on this video. Subscribe if you like what you see, guys. And I will see you next time. And bye!